times. Plenty of times. Plenty of times. <laughs> so, you know, I was not able to uh, <laughs> recollect your face because. Um, <laughs> no, I think I, I think all of us have changed a lot over the years. <laughs> <laughs> I have met you several times in Kolkata. I have met you several times in Delhi. In and in fact, those, those, if you remember, those days when uh, early days of this uh, uh, discussion among the main producers. Absolutely. Uh, they were very exciting, very thrilling. Lot of you know data crunching. <laughs> and market was bad, and uh, all the big brands, uh, Mr. Uh, Rumta, Mr. Uh, even Mr. Prasanthi also came once or twice, if you remember. Uh, very, very uh, uh, knowledgeable discussions were taking place those days. No, no, absolutely, absolutely. Right. So, how well, you, you are heading now? What division you are heading? No, I am responsible for uh, business development and strategy. Yes. And uh, I also head the JSW JFE collaboration. And I'm also on the board of our service center business with Marubeni. So product development and all those things are also... So uh, you are into bigger things, not the Mumbai marketing or selling. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know whether it is big or small, but ultimately a, a person who has been in the steel industry ultimately is known by the quantum of steel that he sells. <laughs> that, that is the biggest point. In fact, I am going to address that point only. So far till now, I find yeah. you know, volume and the how much money you have collected. There are the two considerations. Correct, correct. Baki sab to theek hai. No, no, good to see you. Good to meet with you, Mishra ji. And a good, and in fact, I plan to come next time. In fact, Mr. Dilip Oman has, uh, uh, you know, I had made a request. He had agreed for a meeting. When I come, I'll try to meet you and Jayant also. No, no, 100%. Yeah, you know, it'd be a pleasure. Bye, you know. Because, you know, in fact, in a lot of things can be done, uh, Sanjay. Uh, you know, unfortunately, we are not in I the will, right uh, direction. I know. We'll rejoin in two minutes. <laughs> Ruhi, I will rejoin in two minutes, Ruhi. I will rejoin in two minutes. Yeah. Okay, sir. Hold for two minutes. Good afternoon, Agnes Yeah, Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Puri Sahab. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah. Good to see Mr. Mishraji. How are you? Uh, I'm fine, sir. I'm fine, sir. Namaskar. Namaskar. Good afternoon, Hegdeji. Sanjay Jairam here from JSW Steel. Yeah, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Jairam. Nice to see you. Same here, same here. Where is Dr. Arshavardhan? He was there around. Oh, he'll come back in two minutes, he said. Terence has also joined, so. Hey, Terence, how are you? Hi, hi, Mr. Jairam. Nice to see you. Nice to see everybody here. Same yeah. here, same here. Yeah, yeah. Some familiar faces huh, from uh, from Bombay, I remember. Huh? Some familiar faces. Very good, very good. So very just, good. just for the benefit of uh, everyone, uh, Terence Busutil is uh, the... Um, de facto head of what is called Construct Steel, which is uh, a faction of the World Steel Association. And um, uh, many, many large global steel players are uh, members of Construct Steel, just as they are members of World Steel Association and World Auto Steel. And uh, unfortunately, due to the pandemic in the last two years, uh, we've not had too many face-to-face -face meetings or seminars or, uh, you know, uh, exhibitions. But uh, prior to that, uh, Construct Steel uh, has taken this responsibility uh, on an all-world level to propagate the usage of steel worldwide in infrastructure and construction. And uh, 
they have been very working very very closely with india and all the large steel mills of india and uh, so we share a special equation with construct steel as we are also lead members and uh, the reason why we wanted uh, uh, terence to come and uh, make a short presentation is for him to give us an overview of what's happening in the infrastructure and construction space worldwide and how steel is being used majorly in bridges and in other major construction activities and uh, you know what is going to be the uh, road map for uh, steel use is 3 years 5 years 10 years down the line when uh, there is so much of focus and talk on uh, carbon neutrality and esg and using more green materials uh, you know so that's one of the main uh, you know ideas of inviting terence so uh, more from terence uh, in the presentation and more from him when he starts talking but on behalf of everyone terence welcome to this webinar thank you mr jairam yeah uh, mr jairam i think that uh, that that's a very nice uh, introduction in fact i think you should have done this introduction to all the participants now you have done only to few of us give <laughs> the <laughs> introduction to us about mr terence and uh, and uh, i hope it will be repeated because uh, a lot audience will be there uh, to hear him today absolutely yeah okay are we are we ready to stream yes. shall we go online is that okay yes uh deepika okay so deepika before you go oh. online you will do the welcome and the lighting of the lamp and play the introductory video Sanjay, you will uh, speak a few words there are yes. thereafter. Sorry, you are going to do that, right? At the uh, introduction, I mean. Uh, I will. I will welcome. I will yes. welcome. Oh, one of the is not available, so Ruhi is going to take care of the first two points. I mean, the lighting of the lamp, and up to that point, Ruhi will take care about introduction and the next point. Super, sir. You got disconnected, I guess. Actually, he's connected with his mobile. Oh, okay. Should we start? I think we should. Please. Yes, yes. Yeah, so Biro, sir, uh, actually disconnected. Mm. Just try and message him, see if he's. You may please start. Okay. okay. Good evening, everyone. I welcome you all for our six months webinar series on steel bridges, sponsored by JSW Steel Limited. Now, I request Mr. Hosafa to play virtual lighting of lamp video with Saraswati Vandana and small introductory video of IIB. Devi 
सरस्वती भगवती निशेष जा Mr. Muzaffar, now I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Sanjay Jairam, Senior EVP, JSW Steam Limited for inaugural address. Uh, very, very good afternoon to all of you, uh, the leadership team of uh, Indian Institute of Bridge Engineers and uh, INSDAG, Construct Steel, and my fellow colleagues from JSW Steel and JSW Severfield. Uh, it's indeed a pleasure and a privilege for JSW Steel to host the series of webinars on this very important subject of steel for bridges. <clears throat> and uh, we are extremely thankful and honored to be partnering with IIBE on the series, uh, as we probably are the first steel company to initiate such a webinar series with IIBE. The main purpose of this webinar series is to bring on board all major stakeholders such as consultants, architects, specifiers, town planners, engineers, contractors, and the PSUs to basically comprehend and propagate the usage of more and more steel in the construction of bridges and flyovers going forward. Of course, the reason for this is very simple, and I'm certain I don't have to enumerate the reasons thereof. But for the benefit of the audience, uh, uh, as we are all aware, I think India has set an ambitious goal of becoming a five trillion uh, US dollar economy and uh, by 2025. And clearly, this cannot be achieved without the strong infrastructure growth across geographies and businesses. Uh, the government of India has also integrated various infrastructure projects under infrastructure vision of 2025, which are uh, smartly aligned with the UN's uh, 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. The Indian government has launched a national infrastructure pipeline to invest more than US dollars 1.5 trillion in the infrastructure projects by 2025. Now, clearly, these are very large sums of money, and all these projects are going to be using steel in a major, major way. But that said, 
and with growing awareness on climate change and carbon neutrality, it is imperative for all of us to consider construction of large projects with more and more sustainable and green materials, thereby considering all aspects of economic, social, and economic environmental parameters. Steel, as you are aware, is by far the greenest and the most sustainable and most recyclable material, and it can be used more and more in construction projects of bridges and flyovers. Uh, steel gives incredible performance throughout its life cycle, and thereby it also reduces life cycle cost. Steel structures also provide some very, very key advantages over other composites. The speed of execution is extremely quick and robust. Longer spans can be created in, engineer, in uh, bridges. Accuracy and reliability also is a very, very important aspect. And architecture and aesthetics is something which steel bridges exhibit anywhere you see them. Currently, the usage of steel bridges in India, especially in the short and medium span within the urban and semi-urban cities, is far below the rest of the world. But we need to develop an ecosystem through a collaborative approach with all the stakeholders. And this initiative of this webinar series is one step towards developing such an ecosystem. So on, so on behalf of JSW Steel, I would like to thank all of you who are engaged in this webinar and special thanks to all the speakers who are participating in this special session and also for sharing the valuable inputs uh, with us. And this is wishing the webinar all the very best. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now, I would like to hand over the session to our moderator, Dr. Harshavardhan Subarao. Uh, there seems to be some technical problem. Harsha has joined, Dr. Harsha. Uh, he doesn't seem to have joined. Swapnil? Uh, so can you please so, yeah, um, take the session further? Yeah. I think, can you just uh, put uh, uh, Mr. Ms. P.K. Mishra's uh, introduction so that I can introduce and uh, yes. in the absence yes. of uh, Dr. Harsha, I would like to introduce him so that he can take this session. Uh, Mr. Ozupa, please share this slide. Please share the side. So you have uh, participants. Uh, uh, sorry for the inconvenience, our uh, moderator, Dr. Harsha, because of this technical hitch, he could not uh, join. He was there in the among us, but uh, unfortunately, his uh, uh, connectivity seems to be very poor. Uh, we we'll have to all cope up with this, uh, uh, you know, like new, new, new normal. What they call it these days. And this is also one of the new normals. And uh, among us, uh, as uh, uh, you know, has been uh, in this very, very uh, important uh, uh, webinar series uh, today, we have got a very important personality also, uh, Mr. Pradeep Kumar Mishra. He is the Director General of uh, Institute for Steel Development Growth, an institute promoted by Ministry of Steel, Government of India, and all major steel producers. He is overseeing all aspects of the institute with a thrust on increasing the consumption of steel in the country. Uh, Sri Mishraji is uh, ha having more than 35 years of experience in the sales and marketing of steel industry and has a wide experience in uh, strategic initiatives and sales and marketing functions. Also prior to uh, this, Mr. Mishra also held uh, a very senior uh, management positions in uh, two large public sector enterprises, uh, as uh, you know, that there's a sale, a Maharashtra com a Mar a Maharatna company and a National Aluminium Company Limited. He was a board member of uh, a then director commercial with additional charge of direct finance of uh, uh, Nalco. Before that, he was the executive director uh, of uh, in, in sale and executive director marketing, special initiatives and steel processing units uh, of uh, uh, sale. He was also on the board uh, uh, of uh, sale, Bansal Private Limited, a JV with uh, sale for over uh, three years. Mr. Mishra is uh, an uh, MA postgraduate in English and uh, from Utkal University, Bhuvaneshwar, and joined sale as a management uh, trainee in 1983 and grew in ranks to the topmost uh, position, as you can see. He was sent abroad on two occasions for 
Advanced Management tra Training Program. He was awarded the prestigious uh, Jawahar Award by Sale Management for his outstanding contribution to the uh, company. Uh, I, uh, with his uh, a brief introduction of him, and uh, once again, uh, you know, like uh, apologizing for this uh, technical hitch, uh, I request uh, uh, Mr. Sri Mr. Sri, please, uh, Mishra Ji to take over the virtual dias and uh, deliver his, uh, you know, the initial lecture. Mr. Mishra Ji, uh, uh, the dias is yours. Virtual dias, of course. Yeah, I think you'll have to unmute yourself, perhaps. Uh, thank you, Jihede, sir. Yeah. Uh, I am humbled by your uh, giving such elaborate uh, introduction to me. In fact, my thanks to the organizers for having invited me to this event of IIB. In fact, the topic that still breathes is an area of interest of the institute that I am heading at present, the Institute for Steel Development and Growth. We are doing quite a few work in steel, uh, uh, in bridge engineering. I am a non-technical man and I am amongst the veterans who are experts and veterans in the field. But I'll be talking on a very contemporary subject which Sanjay Jairam has already hinted, how to augment steel or usage of steel in bridge and fly, flyover. That will be the focal point of my discussion. Before that, I would like to introduce to all the uh, you know, uh, members present here, the institute that I represent. Institute for Steel Development and Growth is a 25 year old organization. It was founded by Ministry of Steel, Government of India and Sale, Tata Steel, JSW, AMNS, RINL, they are the founding members. And presently, Mr. T.B. Narendran, who is the CEO and MD of Tata Steel. He is the president of the executive council and chairman of all other steel majors. They are the members. And the uh, you know, uh, explicit objective of the unit is to augment the usage of steel in India, like the way constructed, uh, you know, the uh, company is doing. Uh, the list of achievement of this, uh, you know, uh, institute is quite long, but for brevity of time, I will only talk about, you know, the contributions with regard to bridge and also housing. In, uh, you know, with regard to the bridge engineering, the institute had, you know, designed certain bridges for GRAC, which are a local farm, garden, garden district builder. And right now we are engaged with MART with regard to design, designing steel bridges. And one sort, uh, you know, set of steel design for 30 meter span bridge has been already approved by Ministry of Steel and we have given to MART and this particular achievement was stated by Honorable Minister in Rajya Sabha a few days back. And we are also working on other sets of steel, uh, you know, bridge design for MART which will be delivering about six, seven other sets of designs in next, uh, you know, one year. Uh, we are also right now working on the PMAY housing, you know, where we are trying to introduce, uh, trying to introduce steel frames in housing sector for the PMAY houses. Uh, coming to the main subject, why steel is not getting used the way it should have been used in the construction sector, particularly bridge and flyovers. You know, uh, Sanjay told that in India, the construction and infrastructure, they are the major, uh, you know, uh, segment of uh, consumption. They account for about 65% of consumption of Indian steel. And in steel, in again construction, uh, breeze and uh, flyover, they are a big component. Unfortunately, this particular area why we are not able to use the you know, steel in a big way, despite the fact that our per capita consumption of steel is very low in the country, in the world. And we have only grown about 10 kg. If you see, we are about 
55 kg 10 years back. Now we are about 65, 70 kg. That is the kind of progress we are making. So if you have to really analyze what is troubling us. Is it the knowledge? Is it the expertise? I think our knowledge level or expertise level or the research papers, even my institute can boast of a lot of you know, designs, a lot of research papers with regard to constructions and particularly uh, you know, designs of houses and bridges. But why then we are not able to really popularize the steel component part in the bridge sector? Only railways we find, railways, maybe they have adopted as a policy beyond a certain span, beyond a certain length, all the bridges are made in steel. In fact, some of the iconic bridges like you know this uh, Chenna Bridge over River Chenna and uh, this Bogeyville over Brahmaputra come to my mind because you know as a uh, uh, steel guy in uh, steel authority, I had supply steel there. But if you talk about the bridges in the road sector, bridges and flyover, there are not many. Howrah Bridge is one, and now if you go, of course, the Manali Le, I am told uh, the one of the longest uh, steel bridges there in that area. But if you really talk about the percentage of steel bridge, it is not as high as in railway segment. What is the reason? Go to the district towns, go to the small cities, you'll find a lot of flyovers, but they're all in concrete. For a minute, I am not talking about when you steel versus concrete, but there is a need, there is a benefit in using steel, which perhaps we are not able to see. And I'll come to the reasons why it is not happening. Uh, Sanjay, uh, is my good friend in marketing. I also had a, you know, headed marketing of steel authority for a long time. What the, I personally feel, it is the marketing people in the steel producing community who have failed in their job of providing solution, marketing solutions. Because customers today, they look for construction solutions. If you sell only steel and you tell them how you make a steel house, nobody's going to accept it. I sold plates to you know, these bridge makers. I never knew that what kind of you know, difficulties they are facing or how we can really take care of their constraints. What is the advantage concrete over steel had and why they are going for concrete, why not for steel? We never perhaps went into that detail. So time has come where marketing people of steel producers, they have to really talk about marketing solution, construction solutions, and for that matter, breeze is one segment. Second, concrete, te uh, concrete te uh, technology is something which is uh, with which all our engineers and designers and our decision makers are familiar with. Even today, for any kind of costing, concrete is the benchmark. I'll give a small example in PMAI discussion, uh, which I was piloting a few days back, and IIT Madras, SPA Bhopal, NMIT Jaipur, professors were there. When you discussed with the additional secretary in steel ministry, they said, Madam, we have to really bring in steel frames and it will give so many benefits, XYZ benefits. At the end of the discussion, she tells that the cost is this much. And they have arrived at the per unit cost based on concrete technology. So that is a necessity now to understand that concrete costing, costing based on concrete technology cannot be a benchmark. If that will be the benchmark, then perhaps steel technology or the kind of progress that we want to see, that will never happen. So the engineers, designers, they have a great responsibility also to take it to take the steel technology forward. And last, we are talking about life cycle cost. In fact, life cycle cost is a very important thing. But life cycle cost analysis is not accepted by the government of India. If you see the GFR, that is general financial rules of government of India, they have made life cycle cost an optional thing. That is not a mandatory thing. And uh, you all know that GFR rules govern the tender conditions of all government departments and PSUs. And let us understand, government departments remain the biggest user of you know infrastructure and they 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 are they are, they are the biggest fundraiser for infrastructure so they have to we have to have that kind of you know lcc analysis of that strong scientific verifiable data which will prove them that a steel is a better product so the solution is we have to have a collaborated approach among all the steel makers 
particularly for marketing construction solutions. And Sanjay Jairamji, your colleagues, now, but this is something, you know, if other marketing people are available here, my experience says we have to perhaps do something extra for marketing these kind of construction solutions to the government department on an identified segment. We can't do for all segments. Suppose Breeze is one segment we identify. Who are the people? Who are the policymakers? Who are the stakeholders? How do you convince them? And perhaps a kind of, you know, a group can be formed, Insta can be a part. And we can really pilot this kind of, you know, uh, uh, technical discussion and perhaps create a kind of, uh, uh, you know, positive environment for use of steel. And my request to all the engineers, all the professionals, all the academicians present in this webinar, sir, you are, you know, consultant to government departments in many ways. Writing, doing research, creating paper, which my institute also is doing, I am seeing that, that is one aspect, that is fine. But we have to perhaps translate all these works into actual use and that to the customer. The end customer has to be convinced that steel is a better product. If he is convinced, if the designer there, the fund provider there, they are all convinced, then will something going to happen. Otherwise, we'll continue to move in this small, small pace and you know, 70 kg per capita, it is going to see us nowhere in next 20 years or 30 years time. So our dream of this 5 trillion, because you know, one more point I want to tell Sanjay, 5 trillion tech, uh, economy will have some kind of correlation with uh, you know, steel use. Steel consumption, if you see the top 10 countries in the world who are in terms of economy, only India is the country which is having 65 or 70 kg. All are more than you know 300 kg, 400 kg. Even British, British equal also more than 300 kg. So if you want to have a quantum jump, this kind of thinking perhaps is required. We don't have to sell product; we have to sell the solutions. And that is all that I want to tell. And uh, I wish uh, the webinar all the very success. And I'll be very happy if something comes out which will help us in promoting and usage of steel. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mishraji. And uh, our moderator, Dr. Harshavadhan Subarao, is back. Thanks, Venkat. Thanks, Venkat. Sorry, I just had a little break and uh, I went off air. Mr. Mishra, I should have really have introduced you as I'm also. Nein, nein, sir. It's, my pleasure. it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. I'm with you on Instack board for many years. We know each other from quite some time. Sir. So, of course, anything for Instack is my view. Uh, and thank you so much for the, 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 the wonderful message you've given us. Uh, yes, we need to promote the use of steel somehow. And the only way really is to change the GFR rule with respect to life cycle assessment and costing and also increasing the sustainability. You know, the, the, uh, the, if we can get the evaluation done on a carbon basis, then I think steel will have a much better chance than concrete in the long term. So towards that, uh, Mr. Hegde with, in our audience is also leading a code uh, in in the IRC on uh, you know reducing the carbon and reducing increasing the sustainability and making that argument for the use of steel uh, as opposed to concrete bridges. So for the first time that's being done in the IRC, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank, thank, you, thank you for thank your you. Thanks, being sir. with us, uh, Swapnil. May I ask you to propose a yeah, word of sir. thanks? Yes, before I go for proposing word of thanks, I uh, I think Mr. Dar, Director General of IIB, Mr. Devte, I was facing some technical problem. So he has also joined. So I'll just request him to, you know, give his uh, address because we have to, we have just shuffled the schedule because since he was having a technical problem. So Devte, sir, uh, if you can, if you are there, uh, I would request you to say a few words and then I'll go for a word of thanks. I'll join. I'll join. Yeah, please. Good evening, everybody. The Institution of Bridge Engineers was founded in the year 1989 by one Mr. Bhide. Mr. Bhide, he was uh, uh, a railway chief engineer, having vast experience of more than 35 years on railway, railway engineering, and having worked for more, such a long period, he felt the need of exclusive institution for distribution of bridge engineering knowledge. And after consulting all the uh, senior engineers and uh, practicing engineers and contractors, 
He founded this uh, institution in uh, 1989. Since then, uh, it is uh, it is making uh, putting all efforts to dissipate right. the knowledge and bridge engineering of various aspects. That is bridge construction, bridge design, bridge innovation, and so on. We had constructed we had conducted large number of seminars, conferences. Round, uh, round table conferences and meetings uh, on bridge engineering aspects during this uh, last 30 years, more than 30 years. Only during the last two years, because of this pandemic, we could not conduct the uh, seminars and conferences uh, coming together. But then we switched over to uh, uh, wise, uh, wise conferences. And during, during this period, we conducted more than 28 lecture series on various aspects of bridges. We conducted two days, full, full day, two days, uh, uh, two full days uh, conference, and recently we completed, conducted one 30 hours basic bridge engineering and design aspects uh, course in in, in collaboration with uh, Shigard, uh, Institute of Shigard, uh, College Pune. And this is another new venture which we are trying with uh, uh, jointly with uh, JSW, uh, the six months webinar seminar uh, webinar on uh, steel structures. This will be very interesting webinar because renowned uh, renowned uh, engineers and renowned uh, experienced um, uh, uh, manufacturers and uh, producers. Uh, are coming to uh, share their experience. So this will be a uh, very useful webinar for everybody, an interesting mm -hmm. webinar for everybody. I wish, um, first I uh, uh, thanks JSW to coming forward and uh, 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 venturing for this type of uh, program. So I wish all the success to this seminar. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And, uh, okay. Thank you very much. And uh, before before Swapnil uh, uh, proposes a word of thanks, I just want to make one comment. Uh, you know, Mr. Madhav Bede, coincidentally, was my neighbor in Mumbai, Mahim, oh. you know, until he passed away. In fact, we used to live in the same building. And, uh, you know, the gentleman was so respected. And, uh, in fact, the, I think the whole of Maharashtra from the infrastructure and construction space I don't think uh, anybody, uh, you know, was there who did not know the services of Mr. Badhav Bide or didn't know him. And in fact, he was one of our committee members as well. And I've spent a lot of time with him. Uh, uh, he's a great noble soul. Great. Yes, uh, Sanjay, so I'll just uh, take this opportunity to propose a bit of thanks for the evening, uh, for the inaugural session. Uh, I'm really thrilled to you know have this association with JSW for this uh, great initiative of dissemination of knowledge. What is an, uh, you know a backbone for IIBs? Uh, uh, you know all along these years we have been doing the same. So first of all, I would like to thank them for this great association and this initiative which we have been taking it, taking it forward. So I am thrilled that you know I I hope everybody as a participant must be very much thrilled about the uh, the the six months uh, you know spread over knowledge sharing uh, platform which is being given uh, uh, which we are being providing which is like you know every month we have uh, three speakers uh, uh, speaking about uh, various topics ranging from you know global overview of an and an opportunity of uh, steel bridges, then steel fabrication, then one of the uh, important uh, case studies like MG Setu uh, uh, for the choice of the steel in the superstructure, uh, uh, as well as you know various other topics like design of open web bridges, including pre-stressing, uh, design of uh, Diga Sunapur Railcom Road Bridge in Bihar, then decarbonization of the steel bridges. And then also we do have a panel discussion on the uh, in the July. So basically this whole uh, uh, you know, uh, exercise is going to go from uh, from today onwards till the month of July. So every month we have a great, amazing uh, one session by a, a great speaker nationally as well as internationally. So uh, this is the spread of the overall uh, 
um, you know, the, the web, webinar series what we're going to have, uh, just to give a brief to everyone. Now, uh, I would like to, you know, thank our chief guest, uh, Shri P.K. Mishra, Director General of NSTAC for accepting our invitation and for his kind words towards initiative of dissemination of knowledge to bridge community and also very encouraging and informative opening remarks. Thank you, sir, for accepting our uh, uh, invitation. Uh, and also would like to thank uh, Mr. Sanjay Jairam, Shri, uh, Senior Executive Vice President of JSW Steel, uh, for encouraging words. Uh, I also would like to thank all the senior members without whose support this was not going to be a possible task of IIB, all our executive committee members, as well as senior members of JSW Steel. Uh, so I'm pretty sure I'm very much confident that this six months web series is going to add too much of the value on the knowledge base for all the participants. There will be a lot of learning happening on this uh, uh, web series. So I hope everybody will enjoy the same and uh, would like to thank each and everyone who is participated, uh, participating for today's uh, initiative and overwhelming support which we have received and uh, uh, for the uh, for this session and then I request the now moderator to take over from this point onwards and formally start the session. Over to you, Subhadra. Thank you. Thank you, Swapnil. Thanks uh, very much. Uh, now we have the technical session where we will be having uh, three speakers, four speakers, uh, and then of course uh, we will have some question answers at the end and I hope uh, there will be uh, good questions that will be put forth by the audience. The first speaker today, it's my pleasure to introduce him. Terence is a director of Construct Steel. Terence, in, in other words, Terence Busutil. Uh, he is the director of Construct Steel. That is the steel construction market development program of the World Association, World Steel Association. Between 2012 and 2017, since joining World Steel, he has been responsible for monitoring global economic trends and translating their impact on the global steel industry. Between 2008 and 12, Terence was an economist in the commercial coordination marketing function at Asla Mittal in London. He was responsible for monitoring global economic variables and translating their impact on steel consumption and Asla Mittal's activities. From 2003 to 2008, Terence was an economist at the Central Bank of Malta. His role involved modeling economic variables and producing forecasts of the Maltese economy. Terence holds an MSc in economics with specialization in econometrics from the University of Warwick, UK. Welcome, Terence. And uh, on that note, on an easier note, a lighter note, uh, that you were in Malta, I didn't know, but I have two very good friends there whom you would have definitely happened upon. And more about this when we talk later. Yes. So with that, Terence, may I invite you to give your talk? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Subarawan. It's a pleasure to see you once again. Uh, <laughs> Uh, would it be okay if I share my screen? I have a small uh, uh, Go presentation. Ahead. Yes. Go ahead. Let's see. I presume that you can see this, yes? Yes. Perfect. So thank you. Thank you again, uh, uh, colleagues, uh, Mr. Jairam and JSW. I'm, I'm personally very, very happy to be here uh, because, as I said earlier, Three years ago, before the pandemic, we had come to Bombay to organize something very similar at, at, a, at a, an Indian level, so to speak. I was asked by one of my CEOs to arrange this, and I'm very happy to see that some of the results of this and some of the discussions of this now are taking shape. And I can assure you that uh, this particular initiative that's being discussed over these six months is something very, very important towards building what we term as an ecosystem for steel and construction. Huh? I will talk about this uh, later. So let me, gentlemen, go through this, this very short presentation that I have. Uh, the role will be to focus a little bit on what we are doing in Construct Steel, because I think it's important to put that in context as well. And also to give a few international examples uh, uh, that were given to me by my members on what it is that they have been doing to position uh, steel and bridges. Uh, I have three particular examples which I want to talk. And the good thing is that what is being done by one is being done by the other. And the principles are the same when it comes to promotion. It's a very, very difficult exercise, but it has been done in the past, and I'm sure that we can do this in India as well. It simply requires the combination of patience and time, which is sometimes something very difficult to have. But this is what we've the experience that we have in the UK, for example. Over the space of 20 years, we've managed to increase the share of steel and construction there to very, very high levels. But it required this building of, of an ecosystem. So what is the base of, of, of the discussion? I think something which is very, very important to all of us. 
I remember when I was speaking about construction two years back, I would make the distinction between a developed market and a developing market when it came to the use of steel in construction. Today, we're in a position, Mr. Subarao, where we say uh, every area we look at in the world is seeing a construction boom. Whether it's our friends in China, whether it's in India, whether it's in the EU, uh, which we would usually talk about there being very, very stable and a plateau level of steel use in construction. There is a lot of money being pushed uh, uh, to accelerate development. Uh, and I think this is something which we are seeing, uh, 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 which is in my mind very much tantamount to a boom for the next five to 10 years. So the bottom line is there's a lot of money going around. Uh, and that money, of course, is going to infrastructure. The question for us is how do we take a piece of that cake? Huh? So this is the mega trend that we see in front of us. However, as everybody knows here, as, as, as what has been alluded to before, uh, the market share for steel is not very high. This is the reality of the situation. If you look at the chart on the right, on the left, of course, is the importance of construction for the global steel industry. On the right is our estimates of where the market share for steel goes. And if we look at bridges here, on a global level, we estimate roughly that the market share of steel and bridges is about 20%. Not more than that. Of course, it depends between short span and medium span and long span, where the market share of the latter is typically lower than in short span, as you know. But on a whole, if we look at the market share of all segments in construction, it's about 25% taken by steel. The rest, of course, is taken, as you know, mostly by concrete and increasingly by timber from a very low level. So the point is this, gentlemen, is that we have a very, very strong mega trend in front of us. The market share of steel is very, very low. Why is this taking place? Uh, as Mr. Jaira would know very well, sitting on World Auto Steel, there is a big difference between automotive and, and construction. When it comes to the following segments, you know, construction is a very diverse and segmented business. Unfortunately, for many years, it has not been the main focus of the global steel industry. Uh, it's also coupled by the fact that there is a long-term investment and return in construction. As you know, bridges have a span of 100 years, buildings have spans of 50 or 60 years, and there is an absent ecosystem. So these five factors are things which we need to take as starting points towards working on. And we try to do this in construct steel. We try to touch on these factors. We do not do all of them, but certainly we try to focus on the fact that there are diverse and segmented segments that we need to focus on individually. We are trying to build an ecosystem. The CEOs have been pushing us very hard to work towards building an ecosystem. I'll explain later what we are doing there. So given these, these uh, negatives, if you would like to, to, to characterize them as the way, they create opportunities for us and also in India, because I think the problems are the same there. At the same time that we have these problems or, 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 or challenges, actually, at the same time, our friends in the concrete and timber industries are moving forward. They are moving forward very, very fast. And they are eating away at the market shares that we have. If we look at our friends in the concrete industry, the compressive strength there has increased significantly to the extent that if we talk about bridges now, they are very much involved in curve structures, a business that we have been involved in and, and, and we could compete against. But now they are taking away that share. Uh, they are eating away at it. In the timber industry, many strong strides have been made to the extent that uh, now they are moving into floors, they are moving into load bearing structures, again, eating away at our market share in various applications. So gentlemen, the task is not easy. Uh, as you can see, these, these characteristics of what we need to work against, and there is this developments we are seeing in our in, in different uh, competing industries. So the question is, what do we do as, as, a, as a construct team? What do we do? Our business is primarily split into two main areas, if I could just go through this briefly. We have been asked to focus on technical and research work, which supports various segments. That is on the left. I'll explain what we do in bridges later. We are working in zero energy buildings. For example, there we design a, a building, which we are building a prototype of, to be able to promote the use of steel and how it, how it, how it is much more better placed vis-a-vis -vis concrete. We are working on initiatives and life cycle assessment. We're working now with software companies to make sure that the numbers they have of steel are representative of the truth. A lot of work is being done there. In composite construction, we work with concrete and we work in timber. We work with both of them. An example that the timber is that over 20 floors, we are developing a timber hybrid design with steel. 
uh, together with the timber industry. Yeah? So we're trying to position ourselves with them over 24s. So Construct Steel is not a program which works against any material. Our view is that a building is an optimal system where we have to bring out the best of everything. Going to the right briefly, uh, Mr. Subarau, uh, the ecosystem development. Uh, this is something which they've asked me to push very hard on. There is a very, very quick push on education. On education, what we are doing here, my chairman has asked me to put together a global advisory committee, bringing the professors, the experts from around the world in different segments. There's going to be a meeting, uh, meeting in the middle of March to see how we can work on this. So we bring the experts together under Construct Steel. The other issue with regards to education is that we're going to have a, an also a webinar series, every month video, where we bring experts to talk about key topics, fire, corrosion, LCA, so on and so forth. That is with regards to education. Open platform is simply, we are creating a system on our website where we can bring the solutions of the steel industry together. Their products and solutions of our steel industry members and customers all in one place so our customers can see what the steel industry has to offer in terms of solutions. And together with this, Mr. Chairman, we also have a communications function, which is growing nicely. Website, social media channels where we can promote what it is that we have. So this is what we are doing basically. Huh? There's a very nice member representation that we have. As you see in India, we have very, very strong support from our friends in GSW, from Tata and the AMNS, uh, and a very, very nice global picture huh? Who, who's all pushing into this. Uh, I would like to take the opportunity, Mr. Chairman, to focus a little bit now on the issue of bridges. And, 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 and what, is, what are we seeing these big changes taking place in, in, in the bridge market? Well, there are, as you can see from this slide, four things which are working in our favor in the steel industry in bridges. The fact that there is increasing money from investment, which I talked about before. The issue of sustainability is becoming very, very important in the sense that governments are looking more and more now to prolong the life of a bridge, to reduce the cost of maintenance, preservation, rehabilitation is a very, very big thing now coming in countries such as Germany, which I'll explain later, where there's a big rehabilitation drive taking place. So these natural effects are pushing the use of steel and, and bringing steel back to the forefront where it was in the back before. Innovation, the whole issue of accelerated construction to build fast, modular, is also becoming something very, very important, especially in the developed markets. And the whole issue of educating the workforce. Uh, governments and bridge owners need to be taught. I think this was mentioned before by Mr. Mishra. Uh, you know, we have to be in touch with the government. We have to be in touch with the bridge owners. The United States have done a very, very strong effort on this, and it's paying back, which I'll explain later. So these gentlemen are what we see as emerging trends, very, very recent uh, after COVID. The issue of acceleration, the issue of maintenance have become very, very important. And Steve has a very, very nice place to play in all of this. Uh, now, let me give you uh, three case studies here, which I've, which I've managed to collect from my partners. Huh? Uh, the United States had a very, very tough time. I'll talk about shore span bridges now. In positioning steel in shore span bridges, they tried an effort in the 90s, but it was very, very small and limited. It only involved the steel producers and it fizzled away. In 2005, they reevaluated the market and they found that there was very, very significant interest in putting together something which would position steel in, in shore span bridges. So as part of the AISI, they put together the Short Span Bridge Alliance, which brought together fabricators, steel producers, coatners, fasteners, bridge owners, so on and so forth. Uh, and, and the mandate of this association, Mr. Chairman, is very, very simple. The issue there was the need to change the perceptions from a bridge which was perceived as expensive to one which is cost competitive. And I think the mandate behind this association has been like this ever since. So in the space, from 2007 to now, they have managed to increase the market share of short span bridges from 10 to 30% in a very, very short space of time. And I think the key, which the key point here is, it's a question of organizing everybody. This is the hardest part of it all. I, we were in the same situation in construct steel, is to bring everybody. It cannot be simply a steel industry effort. It needs to be everybody down the chain everybody. And this is where the work lies. And I think the Americans have done this very, 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 very nicely. Some of the achievements that they've managed to do, uh, let me just get this. Uh, some of the achievements have related to the following. Huh? They've managed to standardize short span bridge plans by making them competitive, to expedite the process and to promote them. 
So standardized designs, very simple designs to remove the misconception that steel bridges are very difficult to design. They have managed to put together a web-based tool to compare concrete and steel bridges together. So an architect or a bridge engineer goes into this ESPAN 40, inputs his data and can immediately compare on many KPIs, uh, the, the steel bridge vis-a-vis -vis the, the concrete bridge. They have also, they were challenged by the Federal Highway Administration to put together a bridge which is fast and very, very low cost. They spent three years working on this and they managed to do it uh, by working with everybody. And actually this concept now is, is becoming mainstream in the United States. They have managed to focus also on education through educating bridge owners and designers. They have managed to work also with students and they had a very, very strong communication strategy around all this. It has taken them many years to do this, uh, but they have succeeded. And we have a lot of contacts there uh, that have been more than willing to share with us what they have done. And I am sure that they are more than willing to, to share their experiences with the Indian experts when the time is right. And I think we can arrange this, Mr. Subaru. Uh, our friends from Japan, uh, my friends from Nippon have been kind enough to share some of their experience. And the experience is very much the same. Uh, there is a run by the GISF, the Japan Iron and Steel Federation and the Japan Bridge Association which do the same kind of things that our American friends do. They push and promote the business outside with the developers, uh, with the bridge engineers, very strong relationships. So on and so forth. And again, it's all about organizing everybody. Uh, Germany, now Germany, I wanted to bring the point up a little bit because it's, um, it, you know, um, bridges, steel bridges have a very, very low market share. But I wanted to bring out the point that the market there is turning in favor of steel, Mr. Subar, in the sense that there's a big renovation drive there. Big renovation drive uh, changes the issue of speed, the issue of minimal disturbance to the general public. And I think steel is there becoming the choice uh, for our friends in Germany. Uh, short span bridges can be lifted quickly from place. Long span bridges can be erected on existing pillars without heavier pre-stressed concrete bridges. The issue of speed, uh, the issue of recyclability, uh, acceleration, these are very, very important trends, as I said before, which are helping our friends in Germany who have struggled for many years to lift up their market share. But their fortunes now are starting to change. Uh, these are some ideas uh, from, from some of our colleagues of what we can do, uh, in, even in India, uh, you know, standardized plans for bridges, education program, online design tools where a designer can go there and see exactly to compare the costs to push the issue of life cycle assessment calculator. Again, to have a calculator there, which people can go there and, and, and put their information and see the benefits between the two. Uh, these are some of the, the, the initiatives uh, that, that could, could work also in India, like they have worked in other countries. Now, what are we doing uh, in Construct Steel? Uh, there are two streams of work we have just started. The European Commission has done a lot of work on positioning sustainable bridges. They have uh, sent me a report. We are currently in the process of trying to find out how we can leverage some of the activities there. That is work in progress. We're more than willing to share our progress on that with you. And what I've been requested to do is to commission a bridge LCA study. Uh, my members are pushing me very hard on this to start it, uh, to do a case study, and like we've done with other market segments, to publish the results of this, get it peer reviewed, and do the marketing through our channels. And hopefully, when we do this, we will able also to liaise with our friends in INSDAG to share the information with them, and they can do the marketing domestically. So, Mr. Subaru, I apologize if I went over my time, but this, these are some of the things. Uh, that, that we are doing. Huh? Uh, you know, we wish you the best of luck in India. Uh, we will, uh, if there is need, need of assistance, in need of contacts from other steel producers around the world who have done this very, very well, uh, as I said to, to our friends in JSW, we are more than willing to do this. Uh, uh, please let us know how we can help you. And it's always a pleasure. Thank you, Terence. Thank you for that wonderful expose and uh, giving us the clear view that short span steel bridges are uh, very much doable and the various tools that can be developed like life cycle assessment and with a calculator and addressing sustainability and the various types of construction where America has stolen the march and have gone ahead with their short span and increased from 10 to 30% in a span of hardly 10 to 15 years 
They have completely revolutionized the consumption of steel in bridges and short span bridges there, giving us a world overview of what's being done and also the European Commission report, which you alluded to, which would be very welcome for us to accept and you know start to think about. And very much, uh, we welcome your involvement with us. Uh, we have with us Mr. Venkat Hegde, who's dealing with sustainability in steel bridges in the Indian Roads Congress, as you know. And I too am a member in that. And we will drop on you and your knowledge and your contacts to try and make that document very worthy of positioning steel uh, uh, to a better advantage in India. Thanks, uh, Terence. Thanks for your offer of help. It shall be largely drawn on, I assure you that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Right, right. Thanks, uh, Terence. Now, let us get to the next speaker today. Uh, that's uh, Anirudh Ulabje. He, Ulabje. He's the senior VP of JSW Steel Limited. He's currently heading the business, new business development function. His responsibility includes identifying opportunities for business growth and end use in industry segments and developing solutions to meet the customer's needs. Before JSW Steel, he was with the Tata Group for 30 years, and he's been in sourcing of raw materials for plants and Tata Motors, and also for the combative, combat uh, vehicle defense business of Tata Motors. He was with the core team of business excellence for Tata Sons from 2001 to 2004, where he initiated the top management workshops and business excellence journey. He started his career with Tata Steel and and it, as manufacturing in charge of finishing lines in the cold rolled mill Tarapur, he was instrumental in implementation of steel market strategy for the new 1.2 metric ton, a million ton uh, cold uh, rolling complex at Jamshedpur. So Anirudh, with that, uh, maybe ask you to give your address. Yes. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sabaro. I would like to share my screen. Uh, so, uh, so good evening, everybody. And uh, I have been tasked with the responsibility of sharing a very brief uh, presentation, uh, an overview of JSW Steel, along with my Can colleague you? Vinay, uh, who will uh, later on share the JSW's efforts in the area of steel bridges. Yeah, just put it to full view. Yeah. Yes, I will. Okay. Yeah. So, as uh, many of us know, JSW now is the largest steel company in India. And uh, uh, coming to the group overview, JSW Steel, of course, is a flagship business of the diversified JSW group. JSW also has other businesses uh, in the group in core sectors of our country, such as energy, cement, paints, and infrastructure. Uh, JSW is also one of the fastest growing companies in India. Its roadmap for the next phase of growth includes a target of achieving 37.5 million metric tons per annum steel capacity by the year financial year 25. It has got a very well diversified product portfolio, meeting the most stringent requirements of various end user segments. Of course, we have integrated facilities, the competence in terms of technology, which is required to meet stringent end user requirements, a strong global presence and a very strong distribution network as well as an export presence. Over the past three decades, JSW Steel has grown from being a single manufacturing unit to becoming India's leading integrated steel company uh, with a current capacity of around 28 million metric tons per annum and a very strong pan-India presence, as you can see, as well as a global presence. The company's manufacturing unit in Vijayanagar, Karnataka, is the largest steel location steel producing facility in India with a capacity of 12 million metric tons per annum. Uh, we are serving various customer segments with a very versatile range of steel products. JSW Shopee is a unique network of stores to meet the needs of individual customers across the country. Uh, we already have more than 400 such outlets across the country and we are adding another 200 shortly. Most of these outlets also have processing facilities offering value addition on the products. At JSW Steel, we believe in working closely with end-use customers, understanding their end application, and tailoring our products 
to meet the unique requirements of specific application in the end use sector. Uh, we have also laid the foundation and structures for various infrastructure projects across our country. As going forward, my colleague Vinay will elaborate. Uh, JSW New Steel TFT bars have uh, not only have the perfect balance of strength and ductility, but are also better known uh, for environment uh, offering 100% recyclability and life cycle costs. JSW Steel is uh, one of the first steel companies in India to get the Green Pro Eco Level certification. And uh, suffice to say, and needless to mention, sustainability is the heart of JSW Group. JSW Steel has its presence in major projects of national importance, like the high speed bullet train project, the atomic energy plants, the expressways, and most of the heavy bridges that we talked about and we are going to talk about going forward. Our own corporate office uh, in uh, BKC, Mumbai, is made of steel. So with this uh, short overview of JSW Steel, I request my colleague, Mr. Vinay Pandey, to share with you our understanding of the holistic benefits of steel structures. Over to you, Vinay. Energy, you are on mute. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> good evening, everyone. Uh, we have, uh, we all know that the steel share in the bridges in India is very, very low. The total steel structures may be less than 2%. Uh, so in order to understand the various challenges which this particular sector experienced, we have interacted with uh, all major stakeholders, the concessioner, designers, and contractors to understand the various concerns. And we could point out that there are three major concerns. What is high initial cost? The second is maintenance, which requires regular painting. And the third is standardization and ecosystem, which needs to be created for adoption. So if we just look on the life cycle, which many panelists have uh, spoken about, if we see the, the time which is required for construction in a steel that reduces by 25 to 50%, steel gives end life value, that is scrap value. That is a realization which it means that if the steel structures bridges are made, the designers and uh, this generation people are going to leave asset for the next generation. The availability of new painting technologies and all also reduces the maintenance cost. So if we see the overall, the capital cost, the operation and maintenance cost and end life value, then overall life cycle cost of the bridge structure made in a steel reduces substantially. Now, there are some societal advantage also, the traffic delays, which is caused due to the concrete, the traffic hazards, the extra fuel expenses, which we are burning uh, dollars, the high health and hygiene factors due to noise and dust pollution, dismantling cost of the concrete. And in addition to that, we also need a disposable area. If the concrete the structure at the end of the life has to be demolished, that we need a lot of space to dump those garbage. So that's also additional cost to the society. Environmental effect, the water and sand, which is used uh, at the site is non-recyclable. So once we use more water in case of normal conventional structure, we lost the natural resource, which is very, very uh, important for livelihood of the person. And today water is very scarce in the country. Recyclability, the steel gift, it is steel you can recycle in number of times without compromising its quality. And if we are recycling it, it means that we are using less natural resources, iron ore and mines also, which is good for sustainability. And it promotes circular economy. So the second issue, which was life, if you see, in India, there are a lot of steel structures 
which is more than 100 years and it is still running. So the perception that the steel will get rusted and the life will be less uh, is a myth. So, and it doesn't need today uh, painting every two years as there are a lot of paints which has been developed in the country and in globally, which assures life of 25 or 30 years or more than that. So that reduces the maintenance cost. Apart from that, as a steel solution to this maintenance, for the steel companies, we make uh, highest strength weather resistant steel. So if those steel are used in the design, then your cost will also come down as these weather resistant steel doesn't need painting. So a patina layer is formed, which gives a natural color. So that reduces the maintenance cost and the painting cost as well. The third point is the ecosystem development, which uh, largely uh, Terence has also captured in his uh, presentation. We have divided into two aspects. The one is the software aspect of concept promotion which we will discuss in the subsequent slide little detail, that education and knowledge sharing, awareness, software development, and policy related issues. The another is the standardization, which is a technical aspect. So if you see, uh, over a period of time, the conventional structure has uh, approved a standardized design available in the repository. But that sort of design does not ex exist uh, for steel bridges. So if we move, towards making a standardized design, which will be approved by the competent authorities that is marked, then the adoption will be easier as the designer can choose from that library of design and design the bridge as per those standard things, it reduces the design time, the approval times and other aspects. The secondly, secondly uh, in this, we also need to make a design software which is again conforming to the standardized design as per the local code, so that the designer can design with that software. The last one is the maintenance guidelines. Today, we understand that the railway has got a robust system of uh, guidelines for maintenance along with the structure, but the road bridges does not have. So probably in a collaborative way with the government and uh, all the stakeholders, we need to move in that direction to make such guidelines as well. The first part of the ecosystem change, which is more of the software, uh, what actions we need to do uh, in a collaborative manner. The one is integration with education, means we need to tie up and discuss with uh, educational institutions like IIT and others to develop a certification course. That certification course will build up uh, a skill set in engineering college students, plus the working professionals who are maybe five, six years, 10 years of experience who can adopt through this skill development. Knowledge sharing forum is dissipation of knowledge uh, by expert designers to all stakeholders as a regular uh, feature of uh, skill development. This particular webinar is one of the uh, series for under, under this knowledge sharing forum. So we intend to continue such association with all the stakeholders to promote the and disseminate the knowledge. Awareness creation is the, a communication program to digital media, where we communicate and promote the advantages of sustainability and life cycle costs of this digital. And lastly, uh, we need to develop a holistic software which gives an evaluation tool, which provides an evaluation tool for all uh, for the uh, concessionaire with all the parameters into place like life cycle, maintenance, durability, other sustainability aspects, so that they can compare concrete versus the steel and take a holistic decision based on cost by fit analysis. So steel, we all understood that it is a sustainable material. And in order to promote that, a paradigm shift is needed for the larger benefit of the society. And if uh, we shift our tendering process from L1 on CapEx to life cycle costs, probably we will achieve this. 
Having said that, if we need to promote this, as Mr. Mishra uh, told that we need to provide solution. So JSW Steel is geared up to provide complete solution in this through a joint venture, which is 50-50 uh, joint venture between JSW and UK largest fabrication company, Sawarfield. So in the subsequent presentation, uh, JSW Sawarfield will elaborate on the entire fabrication techniques and the facilities which we can provide as a solution. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pandey, but I didn't get a chance to introduce you. I didn't know you would follow so quickly on. on. So Mr. Vinay Pandey, who just spoke uh, for the benefit of your viewers, is a mechanical engineer and an MBA. He has experience of more than 30 years. He's worked in automotive and steel organizations in his professional career, even at Maruti Ogyog for 13 years and now with JSW Steel for 17 years. He has worked in various roles such as supply quality control, vendor development, customer service, you name it, and he's been through the whole uh, risk management, promotional activities, financing steel usage, the whole lot, business development, customer relationships, management. He has steered various in initiatives as TPM, TQM, total quantity management, VAV, value engineering activities, SLA implementation, tear down analysis, CEP customer engagement program. And now, uh, I would like to call upon the next speaker, Mr. Prasad Savan, okay, to, uh, to, to give his talk. Mr. Prasad Savan, uh, Ruhi, we can go to the next uh, yeah, slide. So it's my pleasure to introduce Mr. Prasad Savan, who is AVP Head of Engineering and Technical Sales and Marketing. Prasad leads the engineering and technical sales and marketing activity as JSW Severfield. Uh, having completed his bachelor and master in civil engineering, he's a licensed professional civil engineer, more than 17 years in civil engineering industry, which encompasses structural analysis, design, strategic technical sales, and marketing of steel construction products and building concepts. His immediate past work experience was with Tata Steel Europe, involved in technical sales of steel construction long products. So, Mr. Prasad, uh, please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, good evening, all. I'll share my screen just a second. Is my screen visible to all? Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. So yeah, good evening all again and uh, thank you for this opportunity to you know present. So as uh, Mr. Vinay, you know, uh, explained that we are uh, JSW Severfield Structures Limited. It's a 50-50 joint venture company of JSW Steel and uh, Europe's largest steel fabrication and erection company, which is Severfield UK. So this joint venture was formed in 2008. And uh, since 2010, we have been serving the Indian market. Very recently, we have expanded our capacity from 60,000 tons to over a lakh tons. And then we have our allied network of uh, you know uh, partners who also fabricate smaller quantities around the country. So combinedly, we can do almost one lakh fifty thousand tons. The picture in the center there shows our two plants, uh, which are based in Balari in uh, in the, in Ternagalu in uh, Karnataka, just besides uh, JSW's uh, main plant. So what advantage JSSL, JSW Severfield brings to the uh, you know, uh, fabrication market is that we have a completely automated uh, uh, unit. Uh, I'm going to show a small video of our plant, like it's a walkthrough of the automated fabrication process, so I won't dwell onto it. We have completed over 130 projects. We are on to project number 170, so it's mostly into the commercial and uh, industrial sector, but we are also geared up to do the bridge sectors and the, you know, the elements that are required to fabricate a bridge. As explained, we have a large installed capacity and we have our own in-house erection team for all the sectors that we you know, uh, cater to. We have a very high committed uh, supply of uh, you know, structural steel from the Jindal family. As we said, you know, we are based in the, uh, in the mother plant of JSW Steel. So steel is, I would say, in our backyard. We also have uh, in-house metal decking uh, company, which is called JSW SMD. So uh, like all in the, in the commercial and the residential or the industrial projects, we use this profile for true composite action. We do our own in-house uh, detailing, uh, which is mostly in Tecla, the 3D software used for steel detailing. So we do the designing and detailing in-house. And we have, uh, since we do the erection, we are a proper steelworks contractor. We, you know, send, we do the, uh, we have a exemplary record in the UK, in the Indian market. 
these are the service offerings uh, we do complete uh, uh, pre planning of a job if it is design in steel we also offer design and build services manufacturing we'll just quickly go through a video erection as i explained you know we go do our own in house erection we have uh, the latest machinery and follow the latest uh, qc qa qc norms and safety is of paramount importance both our partners uh, you know are uh, very giants in their own big field so we follow the most stringent safety norms that they both follow in their respective fields this is a small uh, snapshot or a collage because this is a bridge presentation but i would like to highlight that you know the there is a good traction in the structural steel fabrication uh, uh, you know uh, set uh, 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 construction method in the commercial sector so these are all the commercial projects that we have executed in the last uh, few years most of them in the last 4 uh, to 5 years have picked up so be it uh, office space for reliance uh, or you know data centers for amazon or a tall tower in sri lanka which you see on the left so from residential to commercial we have had a good uh, you know decent run and also industrial we do a lot of projects for our parent jsw and also from some uh, you know uh, uh, niche clients like godrej or itc and uh, you know michelin in the in the in the, in the steel industry so i'll go through the fabrication process i'll come through to the video a little uh, at the end of this uh, you know end of these few slides but uh, uh, this is the video this is the snapshot of our yard uh, factory where you know there are two uh, fabrication units that we have set up we have almost 8 and 1/2 lakh square feet of uh, covered area where we fabricate the entire uh, fabrication process starts with you know making a tecla model and then feeding the tecla model or the tecla ifc files uh, to the uh, automated machines so we make a 3d model and then you know further break it down into uh, serviceable loads what we call so that you know each portion of a building is you know uh, converted into a shippable load so if you see the next picture it has different colors which you know are taken are uh, turned into from a pure magenta and green uh, color model so this is a uh, non colored model we show that you know a portion of the building or a part of a bridge could be you know uh, isolated so that it's determined by a shippable load from 19 to 30 tons whatever we can ship within a from a trailer then we nest the material that is required uh, to you know be cut uh, from a plate or from an hr section and then we come up with a list that needs to be you know a uh, list of plates need to be bought so the picture that just showed up at the last uh, you know is called is shown showing the plate nesting so as you know steel manufacturers supply plates of 2.5 meter by 12 meter or you know if it is tailor made 2.1 meter by 11 meters so then we nest the plates uh, as in a, in this fashion so that wastage yield is minimum so this is an automated software we generate the input the sizes from the tecla model and then you know generate this uh, nesting plan and then the automated lines come into the place uh, come into place so be it a plate or a hr section we feed it in the band saw then in the multi axle drilling machine so we have a very unique machine which drills axes in both which drills uh, holes in both uh, axes at the same time which you know gives uh, accuracy up to 1 mm and then we shot blast all our steel to sa 2.5 standards so all the surface impurities or uh, you know any surface rust is cleaned up before the fabrication process the same process is followed for the connection plates and angles it goes through the cutting plates uh, cutting banks and then we hot stamp or you know hot rolled uh, hot stamp the hot mark all the plates uh, or the sections with a uh, unique identification mark even we shot blast that steel and then it goes to its cutting and uh, you know punching line for plate girders we have uh, three plate girder lines so as you know the bridges or any long spanning structure requires uh, deep girders which you know span anywhere between 700 to 1.5 to 2.5 meters so we have this facility available because as we know there are the road sections available in the country are very limited uh, only a few steel manufacturers make it and that range is also limited it's unlike the british standard or the american standard uh, range which is goes up to 1 meter so but here we can make sections of any size uh, i mean any size to, i mean 1 meter uh, flange width with 90 mm thickness and up to 2.5 uh, meter depth girders uh, with 100 mm web depth so that's more than sufficient for a bridge span you know the bridge girder span that can span up to 25 to 30 meters easily which is kind of the most common span uh, for the steel bridges 
this then after cutting the plates or processing the you know uh, main sections we you know do the fitting and welding which is a very fabrication common fabrication process but it's all on an automated bogey line in a covered shed which will be covered in the uh, video and then we paint the steel and store it in a dispatchable sequence as it is shown the blue color steel is you know put it in a, put in a erectable sequence so that's a particular amount of steel that will be loaded into a trailer or a wagon some quality procedures that we follow we are an iso 9001 certif certified company and also we have the ce certificate and uh, we also have the rdso uh, certification for uh, for the bridges some of the key quality qa qc functions that are followed uh, by our uh, team you know we have an inspection test plan which is tailor made to a particular project be it a government or a power plant or a bridge or a commercial project we agree to the inspection test plans that is required for the project from right from you know the incoming material to the fabricated goods even for uh, the erection works which is when we erect to the bolt tightening or welding welding then there is an erection itp that is you know uh, formed and that forms the basis of our fabrication and erection process all the raw material of course is checked visually and also from the material test certificates and we do third party testing too then blasting which is a very important process we do up to 2.5 and it is also checked with the gauges fit up is manual most of the times because as you know the gussets and the connection plates are you know is a manual process but we do uh, all the fit up checks and the tolerances are our, our, our process is based on ncss5 but we also follow the is and the aws standards welding of, of also we follow aws standards or any approved make any approved approved standard that is required for the project then welding has a visual test and also the ut mpt or whatever falls in the itp entity uh, checks as i just mentioned then painting is a very crucial uh, part for steel structures for at least for industrial structures which don't receive fire coping mostly or the infrastructure projects so it's very important to paint the structure after the blasting so that the paint adheres so there is a time zone of between 4 to 8 hours we make sure that the paint is put on whether it is one coat two coat and then do the necessary checking the dft checking so over the years we've been seeing the bridges or you know even in the city of mumbai we see some of the bridges are fabricated in the open yard or sometimes on the site more less so we would say because it has decreased the site fabrication over the years but there is distinct advantage which is of the you know uh, shop fabrication versus the uh, site fabrication so these are some of the uh, distinctions raw material stored in a proper systematic manner does help you know in fabrication accuracy is one of the most important uh, factors in steel fabrication which is more arrived which is more achieved in online fabrication because all the inputs are uh, you know sent in with the tecla and hence the accuracy is up to 1 to 2 mm the speed is high no doubt there is identification marks unlike the site fabrication you are more 100% relying on manual fabrication blasting is very important online blasting i would say because it you know cleans the surface of steel completely rather than manual blasting which is again depending upon the uh, weather and the human interface fabrication under control environment with you know automated machine and high skilled labor force is what we you know do in our plant is definitely going to be better like uh, for, compared to the site fabrication when it is done in open environment and also has low uh, productivity welding is uh, yes that that's what you know joins the steel up and uh, makes it you know live longer or makes makes gears up uh, gears its strength up so welding in flat position for uh, the uh, i mean we do all kind of weldings even overhead weldings but depending upon the you know type of welds the qualified welders uh, the checkings the testing that needs to be done is better controlled in a, a shop environment rather than in the open painting also requires control environment like i just said earlier I'll go to the video to show the uh, new company process. To bring fast track construction technology to India, JSW Steel has joined hands with Severfield Rowan PLC to form JSW Severfield Structures Limited. JSSL is a 220 crore rupee investment spread across 65 acres in Bellary, Karnataka with 3.5 lakh square feet of covered area and state-of-the-art machinery with a drawing office. The entire process starts with an architect's design that is technically interpreted by the consulting engineer or the JSSL in-house design team. 
This is then converted into a virtual 3D model of the structure using the state-of-the-art Tecla software. The 3D model incorporates all steel members, fittings, connections, bolts, weld and paint information. This information is electronically fed into the CNC control machines on the shop floor. Each steel member is allocated a unique identification number by the computer and these numbers guide the construction operation all the way to final erection. Once complete, the model will generate all necessary material requirements, shop fabrication drawings and numeric control data for the computer controlled shop machinery. It will also produce the general arrangement drawings and 3D views of the structure used for erecting the steelwork on site. In our raw material yard, JSSL's own information management software is used to manage material takeoff and order materials on a job specific basis. Production planning and control arranges the materials in 20 metric ton loads for sequential production delivery in erection sequence. The first stage in the fabrication process comes at the computer controlled band saw machines. These machines use a gripper arm and sensors to measure the exact length of a beam, enabling it to accurately cut it to the required length. A stamping unit then applies the unique reference number to each and every beam. The speed of on-site construction is critically dependent on the accuracy of holes and fabrication fit-ups. In the computer-controlled drilling machines, column and beam splices are created accurately to a tolerance of plus minus 1 mm. The multi-axis drilling machines simultaneously drill holes in both flanges and webs. JSSL is the only company to install online abrasive shot blasting machines in the fabrication lines. The machines clean the surface of steel materials to SA 2.5 standard, leaving the surface ready for welding and painting. The blasting is done prior to welding and painting to ensure high quality fabrication. The bit shop complements the fabrication lines producing all the end plates, gusset plates and cleats. This shop contains computer controlled gas and plasma cutting machines, oxypropane cutting machines, angle cropping machines, beveling machines and stamping and marking machines. All fittings created by the pit shop are also shot blasted to SA 2.5 standards. JSSL uses one-of-a-kind motorized bogies capable of carrying a 20-ton load which pass through an assembly area, welding area and painting area with inspection being carried out after each step. Cleaned steel from the shot blaster is loaded onto the bogies to enable the fabrication of assemblies in accordance with the drawings by highly trained fabricators. Once the bogey reaches the assembly area, the end plates, gusset plates, cleats, etc. are tack welded into position. Following which, dimensions are checked by qualified inspectors for the accuracy of the fit-ups. All tacked components are fully welded by qualified welders using MIG welding equipment in accordance with welding procedures compliant with both Indian and international welding standards. Once complete, the welds are checked by carrying out 100% visual inspection, dye penetrant or magnetic particle inspection and ultrasonic tests depending on project specifications. Only after the sign-off of all welding will the steel be cleared for the final operation, painting. This is done in a controlled environment using airless spray equipment. Paint thickness is tested and recorded regularly with calibrated electronic equipments. The painting is done within 8 hours of shot blasting, thus ensuring optimum quality and comes with a 15-year paint guarantee. Indisec is the name of a new and innovative family of structural steel products for the steel construction sector in India. 
Indisec is the unrivaled market leader in the design and fabrication of long-span cellular and bespoke plated beams designed for optimum weight to span efficiency which are not readily available in the market. It is a new technology which can substitute rolled sections for lighter, stronger and longer spanning plated sections. JSSL has the complete knowledge to design and manufacture such plated sections. This is going to revolutionize the Indian market, which will help the structural consultants and architects to achieve enhanced production economy and optimized design solutions in multi-storied buildings. JSSL also has in-house metal deck profiling machines. It can manufacture two sets of profiled sheets, TR60 Plus and TR80 Plus, catering to the different requirements of multi-story construction. This can provide longer spans of up to 4.5 meters and can create composite slabs which saves 50% reinforcement and 30% concrete. Our decking also reduces the hook time during erection and hence ensures fast track construction. The completed steelwork is delivered to site in an erectable sequence. Yeah, I have a few case studies uh, or uh, rather examples of bridges that our group has done. Severfield uh, in UK has done bridges for the last uh, four decades. So I'll just quickly go through some of the uh, you know key bridges that they have done with uh, you know which has some unique spans and unique uh, structures. So this one is for network rail. Uh, most of the bridges are either for rail or viaducts for the uh, you know vehicular movement. So this is the Otsal Quad uh, bridge that uh, uh, for Network Rail Severfield had built. It is a 5,500 metric ton uh, bridge uh, used with weathering steel. So weathering steel in the UK is very common. There are you know uh, uh, two leading manufacturers who make it, and uh, you know they have been using the weathering steel for the last uh, I think one decade at least, and, it, uh, and seeing the results. So this particular, uh, you know, the arch shape is a very unique and first for the network rail, which is almost 1800 tons is that arch portion. And uh, the, that, that portion was, you know, erected with the very heavy duty mobile cranes, as you can see, crawler cranes, as you can see in the, you know, bottommost picture. And then the trough portion or the, the pan portion also was, you know, built uh, off site and then, you know, transported with a special uh, propeller, SPMT is what they call, and, uh, you know, erected on site. Then this is the Doncaster Viaduct, uh, again, long spanning road uh, bridge, 2000 metric tons, 2600 metric tons, again with uh, 350 MPA uh, built, you know, uh, 650 meter long, simple iced. I, most, most of them are like eye girders with horizontal beams and uh, the deck. Then the London uh, Luton Viaduct, again, uh, almost 8,800 uh, 8, 8, 8, uh, tons with uh, eye section then you see the complete road uh, it's a complete road and the dwindling roads that it is going through it has shear studs on the top and then uh, very common design that we are seeing these days in the indian market where you know uh, the road bridges uh, over the crossings or over the turnings are you know designed in such a fashion so Serfield has that expertise to you know, execute it then the Warrington uh, Viaduct, which is, uh, which, is, uh, which is a long bridge over a kilometer long, almost 11,000 tons. Again, eye girders and then uh, the tapering portion on the piers or the columns. The Hayden Bridge, which was again used with weathering steel over the uh, you know, uh, creek, creek, which has three meter cross girders uh, and you know has a four lane uh, viaduct. The Gatwick Airport span, about 126 meters, again is you know is like a bridge because it you know uh, crosses crosses over. It's a uh, pedestrian bridge, of course, and as you can see, the uh, it's designed in such a way with the height and the span that uh, air flight can go below it. It's 2,000 tons, built built in 2004 for British Authority. Then another weathering steel bridge uh, for uh, uh, that is bridge uh, that was built in Stratford. 1400 tons, 130 meter long over the road and railways it goes over. One of few, uh, few uh, notable reasons uh, that this bridge was you know, built or has some unique features is that 
it had low it has low maintenance because it's uh, it's uh, weathering steel was used exceptional standard of construction was used and then you know indigenous yeah and uh, the last one is the helen bridge a small quantity where again it was built you know on in the factory and then shipped uh, on spmts so yeah that these are the examples that i wanted to cite thank you dr subaro thank you uh, prasad thank you so much for showing us uh, what you do at jsw steel the advantages you have created for us by having pits up to 2.5 meter depth for the webs and 1 meter wide for the flange the yes. quality of construction and fabrication that you i mean the manufacture that you showed us along with in in house so many things you can do in house to improve the use of steel in bridges especially fascinating is 2.5 meter deep webs and uh, 1 meter wide flanges with up to 80 and 100 millimeter thick plates which was hither to for less than about 5 10 years ago less than i would say even less than that not available to us and that changes uh, what we can do for short span to medium span bridges quite easily without having to introduce maybe intermediate stiffness in in the structure you know it is a it's a huge thing if we can do that uh thanks so much um also for the examples where you showed weathering steel and uh, increasingly hopefully we will start to adopt weathering steel in india um uh, let's see how that pans out uh, on that note uh, the technical speakers have finished giving their presentation there were four uh, i i can open the floor to questions and uh, if there are any questions can i ask uh, ravindra are you in the uh, panel today i'm not able to see because i'm using my mobile so are you on the panel ravindra mr goel ravindra goel ravindra are you on the panel uh, venkat are you on the panel today yeah i'm there venkat can you take the question answer session because i i am not able to pin that so if you I can take the that. q and a if there are any and uh, uh, then I, i can some yeah i'm not uh, seeing any question in the question and answer uh, bank uh, basically i think even on the chat box also i can see only mr ravindra goel is saying that uh, good evening i think uh, uh, there don't seem to be any uh, much questions there fair enough and fair uh, enough why don't you say a few uh, words uh, there is there is a question on. here i think i can see one you can just uh, ask uh, uh, one mr uday karatkar is asking what is the constraint for not using weathering steel in india is it on account of for uh, inadequate manufacturing capacity i think uh, one of you can from jsw can take this question why weathering steel is not popular in india that's what the question is a a anybody would like to take ms pandey or prasad uh, prasad yeah uh, is is the jsw team there well the yeah that the reason is until very recently the steel wasn't you know manufactured by all our leading manufacturers uh, but very uh, recently i think uh, the mg setu bridge uh, i think was you know being uh, you know thought of being done in weathering steel where all the leading manufacturers jsw tata and sr you know had uh, developed the capability of manufacturing the uh, steel but i'll ask uh, jsw my colleagues at jsw you know to take that question because they have the capability yes we have the capability i think we need to propagate and create more awareness about it at the beginning of uh, major projects which are coming up and i think we are gearing up to to do that slowly yeah uh, the taking uh, forward that question uh, uh, is the weathering steel uh, is effective only in a particular kind of environment or is it uh, it can be used even in a marine environment Uh, somebody can take that question it can be used uh, in environments in marine environments also so in fact it is more suitable for coastal areas okay mm -hmm. uh, so we can definitely look at specific applications and and then come back with unique solutions for every project but we need to of course promote it more and pitch more uh, aggressively for that yeah basically basically the you know uh, sanjay jaram here if i have to explain this a little more technically yeah. uh, the capability definitely exists and uh, and uh, prasad is right you know until uh, about 5 10 years ago we did not have the capability because weathering steels especially uh, 
uh, larger uh, sections and larger spans are essentially made in a plate mill. Uh, and historically, uh, uh, you know, the Indian steel industry was more from uh, making steel through a coil route. Uh, but uh, now the capability exists. In fact, all the major steel uh, companies in India can produce weathering steels. And weathering steels are basically for uh, corrosive environments. And there are different types of corrosion resistances that can be built on the weathering steel mm -hmm. uh, in terms of coatings, in terms of paints, in terms of other kinds of uh, surface treatments that can be given. So uh, marine uh, environment where uh, uh, you know the salinity is very, very high. So there, uh, uh, you know, special coatings uh, are available mm -hmm. and uh, this could be embedded along with the paints and uh, coated onto the steel uh, so that the uh, you know rust prevention and the corrosion prevention happens. So all those things are available. See, uh, Mr. Jaram, this particular question I'm asking for the benefit of all. Yeah. Well, you see, one of the reasons for not uh, adopting the uh, steel uh, uh, structure, steel superstructure in the marine environment is quoting uh, that uh, that uh, it is highly corrosive prone, corrosion prone. This uh, steel structure. That is the reason it has been avoided, uh, uh, you know, like uh, perennially. Uh, that is the reason if, uh, if, if the weathering steel is uh, one of the solutions which doesn't require the painting for a long time. In fact, it doesn't require the painting at all. And if it can last for 100 years, normally the bridges are designed for 100 years. And uh, if it can be effectively used, I think, uh, I think we will be able to use this uh, uh, steel also in... Uh, a marine environment. No, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, think, I think you're right. Here it is. Taking so, that further, this yeah. is Harsha Subra again. The, taking that further, yeah. um, it could have been used for the MTHL project because Japan are also leaders in weathering steel. And it wasn't specifically chosen for the MTHL project because of the C5 paint that they chose instead. Mm -hmm. Was that on the base of life cycle assessment or was there any other reason why it should not have been in weathering steel? Uh, are you the asking Trans Harbor link in Mumbai? Are, are you asking this question to Mr. Jaira? Yeah, anyone, Venkat, whoever is. I I really I don't know. Do. I really don't know how why uh, whether it steel was not uh, sort of uh, prescribed for this uh, MTHL project. But uh, you see, one of the apprehensions uh, most of the you know like uh, people who are the owners who have this uh, uh, use for the use of the steel structure. Uh, uh, in the marine environment is that though, you know, like uh, there are a lot of paints are available, which is effective and the maintenance is done properly by doing the painting of one, the, the steel structures can last for a long time. But uh, uh, looking at the maintenance uh, sort of an ecosystem, which is available in India, everybody is afraid of whether that kind of maintenance will be carried forward, you know, going forward. That's that, with that apprehension, normally the steel structures is avoided. This is what my... Uh, my uh, my practice is that is the reason I was just exploring whether uh, if, if by using the weathering steel that apprehension can be overcome. I think certainly I think going forward we can certainly should uh, go for a weathering steel uh, uh, if it is effective in the marine environment. In my view, uh, absolutely right. Okay. No, like I must confess that you know these kinds of steels were not available in India about five to eight years ago, okay. but now because of the large plate mills which have been commissioned by large steel companies, you know, uh, high-end steels are being made. And, uh, uh, you know, today, uh, you know, steel companies have also developed a grade such as DMR 249A, you know, for making torpedo ships and for submarines. So, and those are nothing but weathering steels, uh, but, but they're all in uh, plate gauges and they're all flat steel. But for structures, I think uh, definitely an engagement would be required and uh, I think I agree with you. I think we should look at possibilities of using these kinds of steels and by engaging more and by discussing more. Yeah. Uh, yeah as you can see, a number of questions are being asked on weathering steel if you go up and down the question bank. Yeah. Uh, so, so I think to what Mr. Jairam has said, Dr. Subbarao, uh, the Pamban bridge, which yes. connects uh, Rameshwaram to Dhanushkodi. Yes. Is it in weathering steel? Yeah, so we will. Uh, it it has it is more than hundred years old. So we'll study that. But one thing is for sure that if there is a capability, steel has proven itself in marine environment, and uh, we would like to study the application. And we have the capability on the plate mill now. 
so we can build up on this thank you excellent this is good news in fact this is good news and the fact that you are propagating that it can be used in a marine environment and if necessary with some coating after the patina develops maybe in future if we if there is a propensity to corrode say 50 years hence we may be able to sustain it further with a simple coating of paint so that might also be you know a double use a sort of barrier so uh, one can look at all these things uh, in the future uh, in in steel construction i think that's where we'll be heading uh, we're running out of time uh, venkat i think we should close so i'll just uh, we have got about 4 or 5 minutes if anybody in the panel wants to say a few words uh, please go ahead and mute and go ahead anybody yeah, so first of all i would like to uh, first of all on behalf of jsw i would like to thank all the participants for their kind attention and of course uh, a very big thank you to indian institute of bridge engineers Uh, you have so kindly taken this agenda forward that we were discussing, and uh, I think well begun is half done. So, <laughs> a big thank you to the organizing team from Indian Institute of Bridge Engineers. Thank you, thank, thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, Terence, uh, have you anything to add? Because now you have been appropriated as a partner to the IRC Codal Committee, which is do doing work on sustainability. So, you and uh, the, the the set of expertise that you'll bring to the IRC committee would be most welcome. So, if you're with us, you want to say a few words? Yes, yes, yes. Look, uh, as I said before, I, I, I think this is the way it has to go. Uh, the, the the struggle is a is a long one, but a rewarding one. Uh, and I think the steel industry in India now has realized that it has to start developing this ecosystem. Uh, and I also I was impressed by the presentation of Vinay and Anirudh, and there's a plan actually to do this. From my position where I sit, as I explained already before, we will do everything uh, when we are approached. Uh, we will do everything to to bring the expertise, the contacts, even from the other steel producers that we have around the globe, who have been through this struggle already, so to speak. We will do our utmost uh, to to help you engage in this in this challenge that you have in front of you. Uh, But we I think look it, forward. Yeah, it has to be done now uh, because we yes. have been in Europe already. In Europe, you know, when things weren't done, it became a concrete market. Germany, Spain, Italy, and then it's very difficult to change it when it gets to that level. So I think the effort needs to be done now in in the beginning. Now, and, and, and the good thing is there are cases, there are examples, there are experts who have been through this who are more than willing to share what they have done. And this is, I think, where we as Construct Steel can help, and we will do it. With pressure and with enthusiasm, I will be depending on you for that, Terence. Uh, with the sustainability, the life cycle uh, calculator, etc., I will be depending on you and counting on your help. Thanks so much Thank for you. being with us. No, absolutely. Uh, may I ask? Yeah, uh, Mr. Rao, just, just one final comment. You know, uh, now of course, let me also uh, you know extend my heartfelt thanks to IABE and uh, all the stakeholders. You know, Terence and uh, uh, Mr. Mishra from Insdag and. Uh, Uh, you know all the participants. I think I think uh, most important uh, in this whole uh, game is that uh, you know whenever we talk about a problem, whenever we talk about a particular uh, issue, you know we are always sitting on the opposite side of the table and trying to look at, trying to keep tossing the issue back and forth. But I think this is one area, and if steel propagation has to happen, and if the Indian steel vision of 300 million tons has to happen, and if the infrastructure vision of, uh, you know, the construction and the so much of money outlays, which the government has pledged, if all this has got to happen, I think engagement with all the stakeholders is going to be the primary uh, focus. And I think with you on board, and with these five webinars that we are going to be six webinars totally that we are going to be conducting, my only request is we should get. all the real important senior members from the industry whether it's a consultant specifier architect town planners psus to come and talk to us come and share with us and from a steel industry perspective we will listen to them because today while we make a lot of steel we make all kinds of steels but ultimately we need to meet the customers expectation i think that's very very important so we are willing to listen to them we are willing to learn from them we are willing to work with them and trying to offer solutions i think that's the most important thing so from our side we pledge unstinting support and uh, thank you very much once again for steering this whole webinar and 
for the balance five webinars as well. Thanks. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, ma'am. Uh, can I ask Mr. Mishra to say a few words? If he's with us. Mr. Mishra, no, sir, are you with us? No, it's not seen. No, okay. No, okay. 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 So, Venkat, we have Terence's help for our requirement of service. Yes. And uh, it is that uh, he has I, I, agreed I, to help us. It's a great I, thing I, for us. Yeah, I just want to say that, uh, Terence, that uh, on behalf of the, you know, like uh, Indian Road Congress subcommittee, I'm heading this 5.3, the, the sustainability uh, committee for, uh, especially for the steel structure. This committee is meant for uh, uh, bringing out the quotes on the steel structures, basically on behalf of the Indian Roads Congress. So I'm heading that uh, sustainability cause. And uh, uh, we have a, uh, Mr. Dr. Harsavardhan Subbarov also as a member of that. He has got a very big task to write on the circularity as well as the, uh, the, the, the life cycle right. costing. And he's the one who has to bring out the life cycle cost calculator for us. I'm sure that uh, you would be able to help him. We'd be able to join him and help him. Uh, I invite you to join our uh, IRC subcommittee, that is 5.3, uh, uh, to, to help us in uh, bringing out this life cycle cost uh, calculator. Uh, Asha, it's for you to take him on I, your... Uh, I will take him, uh, Mr. Pandey and uh, Mr. Terence would be... Yes. And in fact, anybody from the industry who has uh, studied knowledge and is able to help us uh, and uh, help us develop this document is most welcome to join. I mean, you, you, all you have to do is uh, send me a note or send IIB a note or send IRC a note and we will see that you're included in that committee. Uh, Mr. Saab, are you, if you're not with us, uh, then I think... Uh, Anybody in the audience, uh, anybody in the panel want to say a word or two? Uh, Venkat, anyone there? Otherwise, uh, I'll call on, is Gopal going to join us for a vote of thanks, Ruhi? Uh, no, sir. I will uh, propose. You will do that, Ruhi. Thanks. Thank you. Is that okay? Then can we close the session with a vote of thanks? Yeah, okay. Ruhi, give a vote of thanks then. Thank you, sir. To all honorable dignitaries, it's my privilege to have been asked to propose a vote of thanks for our six months webinar series on steel bridges sponsored by JSW Steel Limited. I, on behalf of IIB, extend a very hearty vote of thanks to all members and non-members for gracing us with your presence and sharing with us with your valuable feedback and suggestions. Firstly, I would like to thanks to our Director General, Engineer DG Diwate for always providing us with a vision for the future of IIBE, our President, Engineer Vinay Gupta, for constantly guiding, motivating, and inspiring us to achieve the vision. I would like to thank our treasurer, Mr. P.R. Kilkar, for being a st strong support of IIBE. Our honorary secretary, Dr. Gopal Rai, always guide us with his humorous side. Our honorary secretary, engineer Swapnil Joshi, for always managing this platform. I would like to thank to Mr. Sh Sanjay Jairam for his inaugural address and laying down the session. I would like to thank to our chief guest, Shri P.K. Mishra, for gracing us with his valuable presence and sharing with us his valuable suggestions. I would like to thank to our today's speaker, Mr. Terence, Mr. Anirudh Ullabhaje, Mr. Vinay Pandey, and Mr. Prashad Sawan for his enlightening and entertaining presentation and sharing valuable knowledge in this platform. I would like to thank to our today's moderator, Dr. Harsavardhan Subbarov, for managing the webinar on this forum. I would like to thank to all our eminent executive committee members and Shri S.K. Puri for their valuable presence and support. I would like to thank Engineer Deepika Singh, coordinator of IIBE, for always helping and managing all the events of IIBE. Last but not the least, Mr. Huzaffa, for all his IT support, and also to all the participants who always come in huge number to make this webinar a great success. Thank you. And thank you to the team members of JSW. With the permission, I would like to close the session. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you, Thank you all. Have a pleasant evening. Have a pleasant evening. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.